In the tech world, if something works perfectly, it goes unnoticed. But if something feels slightly wrong or janky or clunky, then the complaints just come flooding in. The same is true in gaming, especially with this one thing that we're going to be looking at today. Some parts of video games feel terrible, but the player for the life of them couldn't put their finger on what that is. I've had this experience with a few games and I really need to sit and think about my reasons why. We're going to look at one of those things that you have to get right, and if you don't, you're going to feel it. It's the thing that makes you feel like Spider-Man. Movement. In Marvel Spider-Man, you get to play your ultimate power fantasy as the spandex-clad webhead as you punch, kick and web-swing your way through New York City. Every part of this feels fantastic in my opinion. Now, I can only speak on Spider-Man 2018 slash remastered and Miles Morales. At the time of writing this, I've yet to play Spider-Man 2, though I can probably guess that the punching, kicking and web-swinging around New York City feels even tighter than before. Not sure if the spandex can get any tighter though. Despite having a fast travel system, I found myself barely using it because it was much more fun to swing to my destination and maybe tackle some side quests on the way. Web swinging in Spider-Man feels intuitive and reactive. When I press a button, Spider-Man does exactly what I want him to do. The same can be said for the rest of the game to be fair, but we'll come to that in a bit. When I press R2, he shoots a web to a nearby building and when I let go of R2, he lets go of his web. Now, you may be thinking that's obvious, and the same thing happens in all games, which is true, but here, it's different. When I press a button, he does what I tell him instantly. No waiting for an animation to finish, he just seamlessly goes into the next action I want to take. This is mostly what makes it feel fun and intuitive to swing around everywhere, and I dare say, addicting. A big part of this is Insomniac being selective with how real they make the web swinging feel. There needed to be an aspect of realism for it to feel impressive, but also not too much to make controlling Spider-Man not fun. If the physics of swinging were completely accurate, then the player wouldn't really get anywhere and the learning curve would be way too steep. You may as well run everywhere or try to learn rock climbing in real life. Mike Fitzgerald, Insomniac's director of core technology, has stated, If we perfectly simulated the dynamics of a person swinging from a rope on 34th Street, the player wouldn't feel much like a superhero. And every web you shoot to swing from needs to be anchored to an attachment point on the edge of a building or tree. Every piece of architecture in the city is tagged with places webs can attach and as you swing around we find the perfect swing points to preserve your momentum and keep you flying towards your destination. Preserve your momentum is a super important part there. It's all about keeping that flow with the character's movement and it's something that a lot of games can get wrong. I'm not going to pretend that it's an easy feat to achieve. Making games is hard, but movement, in my opinion, should be the top priority for any controllable character. Something I'm not sure Luminous Productions thought when they were making Forspoken. I tried playing Forspoken recently and good heavens, what a mess. Putting aside all of the messy UI, terrible dialogue and destruction of my R2 button, I want to focus on Frey's movement. One of this game's major selling points was that you could zoom around the world of Athia as Frey, jumping over tons of high obstacles, zipping up buildings and bouncing around your enemies. You can certainly do that, in some cases. Other times, Frey doesn't do any of that when trying to tell her. This is kind of like getting my four-year-old son to do something, along with the attitude. To have Frey parkour around the place, the player must hold down the circle button while moving. Simple enough. Good luck if you want to do this anywhere other than wide open areas. Trying to bounce around rooftops is extremely clumsy and doesn't allow for small adjustments to be more accurate with your movement. Assassin's Creed 2 has much better feeling parkour and that came out 14 years before Forspoken. It may not match the speed that Forspoken goes for, but it maintains the same level of speed throughout your escapades. It's frustrating trying to get Frey to go around the town collecting all things because the simplest of movements takes too much work and causes you to lose all momentum. Let's bring it back to the way Spider-Man keeps your momentum. Point zipping. Point zipping is a fantastic way of keeping your speed when web swinging through New York City. Of course, like the real New York City, not every building is over 100 stories tall for you to stick your web to. So what Spider-Man can do is shoot his webs to almost any point on a rooftop or lamppost or street sign etc, pull himself towards that point and launch off it at speed. This always feels great to get around and in some parts of the city, like Harlem, it's a must for getting anywhere quickly. If you're trying to protect the city from ne'er-do-wells, of course you need to be able to get around quickly and be able to fight them well enough. Tight combat controls, though not part of getting from A to B, must briefly be mentioned here because it all adds to the whole package. <laughs> what a package. Yeah. 
Tapping the square buttons, punch and kick, triangle to web strike an enemy further away, and juggling enemies in the air feels so effortless to control. It's all to do with Spidey doing what I tell him to do when I tell him. When I push a button, he reacts. Even if I'm in the middle of some sick combo or fighting in the air giving the enemies what for, if I press a button to do something else, there's a level of animation cancelling that allows Spider-Man to go ahead and do it without looking jarring. If I decide I don't want to be in the fight anymore, I can just see ya and web swing out there or run up a building. Running up a building like that is the closest this game has to giving you parkour. Not that this game needs it, it's not Assassin's Creed. So Assassin's Creed is a series that has pretty tight movement. My favourite is Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag, for which I have made a review. You can find a link to that in the description. The responsiveness of moving Edward up buildings and hopping over rooftops is excellent. Almost seamless. Almost. There are times when he gets hung up and doesn't quite make it to where you want to go, but I can forgive that. Largely because Ubisoft did something pretty major with this game and made not one, but two types of movement that feel fantastic to control. Of course, I'm talking about the ships. Most games will either have a character moving or a vehicle. Those that have both, usually in the form of some type of mount, never give the same care and attention to the secondary movement type, and it can feel clunky or janky. The Witcher 3 and Roach springs to mind. Isn't Roach so silly? That's not the case with this swashbuckling adventure. Controlling the pirate ship feels just as good, if not slightly better than controlling Edward. I feel like this comes back to the game having a level of realism in its movement. Movement is incredibly important in any game, which is why it should be compulsory to get that part feeling as close to perfect as possible. Spider-Man has been my biggest example here, but there are so many other great games that know this. Nintendo has understood this from the very beginning, and Super Mario Odyssey is a fantastic example of player movement being one of the best feeling features of the game. Super Mario Odyssey is a good example of an easy to learn but hard to master movement. The way in which the player can use Cappy to scale buildings, in a much more stylish fashion than Spider-Man I must add, is unique. Much like Spidey's webs, Cappy is a versatile tool to be used to get you from A to B, and also those hard to reach spots for some excellent rewards. Now, I learned how to move in Super Mario Odyssey, but I wasn't good enough to master it. But that doesn't matter. What's important is that Nintendo was able to craft a movement system that almost anyone can play regardless of skill level, and it feels fun at every level. Allowing that freedom to go anywhere, depending on your skills, is only possible because the way Mario moves is at the core of the gameplay. Again, pulling off technical jumps in Super Mario Odyssey demonstrates the idea of keeping the momentum going, otherwise Mario will just fall and meet his maker. Don't have webs to pull him out of that one. It will of course take some practice to pull off a lot of the harder jumps, but they are possible, as demonstrated in this clip by Nintendo Life. I don't have nearly enough time to practice my skills in Super Mario Odyssey quite that much, so seeing this is making me jealous. I'll stick to the ease of Spider-Man for now. Movement is so important. It's why some walking simulators are so popular, because they make walking not boring. Actually, that's a bad example. Walking simulators are usually highly rated based on their story, not because someone was thinking, damn, that's some good walking. Well, anyway, Insomniac and Nintendo realized that movement is one of the most important parts of a video game, and it's time pretty much everyone else realized that too. <laughs> I want to spark a conversation with you too. What games have you played where the movement just hit that spot, where it felt as close to perfection as it could be? And also, what games have you played where the movement just felt like absolute ass? It could actually be quite fun to play some of the stinkers as well. It's the most fundamental part of any gameplay and getting it right keeps the player fully engaged. I would argue that the developers need to get the foundations feeling fantastic and then build all the fancy stuff on from that. Fundamental has the word fun in it after all. More games that feel good to run around in please. There's too many out there that's just a hair away from feeling like quop. I'm eager to see all the games that have yet to come out, and here's hoping that the developers have put a lot more focus on movement. I already mentioned Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag and how great the movement feels, so if you want to see more of my thoughts on that, then you can see my review right here. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you over there. Bye bye.